The Prodigy headlines with the former Strikeforce welterweight champion. Oh, don't be scared, homie. Japan's best pound-for-pound -pound fighter makes his UFC debut. It is a good, great opportunity for me. And UFC 137 is finally set to go down in Sin City. That's been, that's been a fun one. That's been a fun one to deal with. This is Fight Network's preview show. Oh, yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Davis and you're watching Fight Network's preview show. We're taking a look at the UFC 137 card as two of the world's top welterweights, BJ Penn and Nick Diaz, are in action in the main event. And this matchup comes after a number of changes to the headline fight. Our MMA analysts John Ramdean and Robin Black will be on shortly to break down the fights and give us their predictions. But first, John Pollock is bringing us a look at the bizarre turn of events that have led to the shuffling of the main card at UFC 137. Originally, fans would have been treated to UFC welterweight champion George St. Pierre versus former Strikeforce welterweight champion Nick Diaz, along with BJ Penn taking on Carlos Condit. But a whirlwind of change has swept through UFC 137 and altered the card drastically. After failing to appear at a number of scheduled promotional events, UFC President Dana White made the decision to revoke Diaz's number one contendership and oust him from the main event spot. This kid's not going to show up in Vegas, didn't show up in Toronto. What else isn't he going to show up for? Is he not going to show up for the fight? I'm, I'm not going to risk that. Following the changes, a new title challenger was selected. I think a lot of you know the way that I operate and the way that I do things. You know, those of you who follow the sport, and this kid absolutely deserves this title shot. With Carlos Condit receiving a title shot, BJ Penn was left without a dance partner. The goal to preserve BJ Penn on this card still as a co-main event, or will he be relocated to another card? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that now. If I told you what I want to do with that fight, you guys would go, oh my God, you're nuts. So we'll see what happens. Feel free to tell us. Yeah, I'll tell you. The UFC did pull through with an extraordinary matchup to the surprise of most pundits. Diaz was selected to face Penn. With the card seemingly taking shape, one more obstacle would emerge. On Tuesday, October 18th, Dana White announced via Twitter that George St. Pierre had pulled out of the fight due to a knee injury suffered in training. As a result, Condit would also be pulled from the card and the title bout would be postponed. The Penn Diaz bout has now been promoted to center stage and despite all the changes, it is an event that has managed to produce a mouth-watering matchup for all fans. Let's get to the main event that some people originally argued was going to be more exciting than GSP and Condit. Former lightweight and welterweight champion BJ Penn enters the octagon, coming off a draw with John Fitch in February. Well, Nick Diaz has vacated his Strikeforce welterweight belt after making three title defenses and is on a 10-fight winning streak. We'll get to what some of the other fighters have to say about this matchup, but first, John Ramdean is breaking it down. In what is destined to be one of the most dynamic matchups in recent memory, two former welterweight champions collide when BJ Penn takes on Gracie Jiu-Jitsu fighter Nick Diaz in a 170-pound encounter. For years, Penn has widely been recognized as one of the most skilled and fearsome competitors in the sport's young history. BJ Penn shows the quickness he has, wow! Influencing many with his textbook technique and lethal finishing abilities. I have two guys, the best in the world. Uh, the first guy, the name is... No, no, Shao <laughs> Zone. BJ Penn, it's my opinion. The Hawaiian has established his MMA legacy with his superior accolades, fighting spirit, and contributions to the sport itself. But across the cage from the former lightweight champion on Saturday night as a fighter well known to all in the welterweight class. Come on, don't be scared, homie. I got Come on. And who knows what type of challenge lies in front of him. It could be his toughest test to date, as Diaz will certainly come into this fight the larger of the two men. The Stockton native continues to go against the grain and blaze his own path of glory, despite blown opportunities and criticism from fans, the UFC, and his own team. However, Diaz consistently performs to the best of his abilities, showing up at fight time ready to take on any man that dare to challenge him in the art of combat. It's over! These two warriors have a special gift that many in the sport simply don't have, the willingness to engage. It seems that both of these fighters throw caution out the window in order to thrill the audience with their multifaceted arsenal and unmatched toughness. The difference in this bout could come down to conditioning. Diaz is recognized as one of the most physically fit competitors who constantly puts pressure on his wilting opponents, while Penn has proven deficient in that area in the past. 
Now promoted to the main event, these two athletes will certainly provide fans with the exciting action they've come to expect. It is a matchup that should determine the number one contender in one of the deepest divisions in the UFC, and in the process, further help establish a lasting legacy for two of the sport's most skilled and entertaining combatants. Man, I love this matchup. You know, I, I, I love this matchup better than George versus Diaz. I think it's going to be a sick fight. Uh, you know, both there are very, very awesome on the ground, but they are very good boxing too. I think the, the power will be on the BJ Penn side, but man, I, I can choose a winner in this fight. You know, I, I just can't wait. BJ might have a slight wrestling advantage, but I think uh, Diaz is probably too long for, for BJ and uh, Diaz is going to take it. And I hope he does. I hope he knocks him out. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fighters have, have, you know, greater reach over their opponent and don't use it well. But Diaz fights like he's 6'10", you know, he's, he stands very tall, uses his reach well, high pace. I think he's just gonna, gonna crush, crush Penn with his, uh, with his cardio and with his pace. And I don't think it'll go to the distance. I think Nick Diaz will win that fight, if I'm honest. Um, Nick Diaz it comes with an attitude that I don't think uh, BJ Penn is gonna be able to control. And um, I think it's gonna be a boxing match. If BJ Penn is smart, I would take him down and submit him. Um, but we'll see. I think BJ Penn's amazing. I think he's still amazing. I think he's always been amazing. I'm not sure why people are saying, oh, you know, he's not, you know, incredible. BJ Penn obviously is incredible. To me, he's been incredible for a while. Um, he's beaten very tough guys. Uh, I think he looks great. So I think it's just a great match of two guys actually at, at the height of their evolution. I think BJ Penn looks great. I think uh, Nick looks amazing too. I mean, he's, he's really turned a corner. He comes on strong. He has so many great assets. I think that's what makes this a great fight. I don't think you're looking at a guy that's over the hill fighting a guy that's, you know, up and coming or something. I think you're looking at two great veterans at, at probably the height of their game doing extremely well. And uh, yeah, I think that's what's going to make it a great fight. I think a lot of people are excited to see this fight between a legend and the Stockton bad boy. Personally, I think BJ Penn is going to come in with a better game plan than Nick Diaz. So I'm leaning towards Penn walking away with a win in this one. But let's hear what our analysts, John Ramdeen and Robin Black, have to say about it. Thanks, Sarah. I don't know, is this fight really going to be that exciting? Yeah. Yeah, it is. This is a great fight. A great matchup. Both of these guys always out for blood. Both of these guys, a little bit crazy, incredibly skilled. They both want it, it's gonna be great. An outstanding matchup by the UFC. Kudos to matchmaker Joe Silva. My only beef is this fight should be a five round matchup. Both guys were considering it. Yeah, considering it. I mean, if you're Diaz, you know this guy has an unlimited gas tank. He's in incredible shape. If you're BJ Penn, he may say he was considering it, but a three round fight I think is best for Penn. These guys possess skills in every single realm of mixed martial arts. Great stand up skills, great jiu jitsu abilities. Diaz, we've seen him improve in his wrestling abilities. BJ Penn's takedown defense, as well as his takedown, simply phenomenal. Who do you give the edge to in the striking department and why? You know, in theory, BJ Penn is the more technical striker. We've seen it from his Sean Shirk fight on. He has great, crisp boxing. But, you know, we've seen Diaz deal with great boxers, KJ Noons, Paul Daly. He handles that well. And, you know, it's, it's really tough to predict. Honestly, it's very tough to predict everything in this fight. Any analyst who comes out and tells you how this fight's going to go, he's talking out of his ass. We talk about BJ Penn and his textbook striking abilities, solid boxing, his combinations are there, but Nick Diaz, very unorthodox, he moves forward, he's going to try to attack the body. How will the four inch reach advantage play to the favor of Nick Diaz, as well as him being a southpaw? Well, this is what we've seen Nick Diaz do always. You know, whether you're in theory a technical boxer, more technical boxer than him or not, he's going to come in with a crazy volume of punches from all kinds of angles. There's not a ton of heat on any of those punches, but he could throw hundreds in a round. And that southpaw stance, he, he fires that right hand out, he plays with distance. He's tough to deal with. BJ Penn is crisper, but Diaz is weirder. Robin, we heard Caesar Gracie say that if Nick Diaz gets this fight down to the ground, he believes that he could tap out BJ Penn is that really likely? No, but, you know, it's like a no, but. We don't know enough about how these two match up on the mat, and that's probably what's gonna make this so exciting. We know in theory they both have world-class jiu-jitsu, they both have fantastic submissions, but they have so few opponents in common, they have so few ways to compare their jiu-jitsu game, we gotta see it. 
I don't see anybody tapping out BJ Penn, but hey, anything is possible. This is an almost impossible fight to call. Robin, both these guys know what type of opponent they, they're facing on Saturday night. For Nick Diaz, he had posters of BJ Penn on his wall, so he knows he's talented on the ground, he has awesome wrestling, awesome striking, and Diaz wants to pull the, pull the trigger before Penn does. We've heard BJ Penn in the past say, be first, be first. Well, that is Nick Diaz's game plan, and very few opponents are able to sustain or be able to deal with the pressure that the Stockton bad boy puts forth. It's true, and uh, you make a great point with the fact that he looked up to BJ Penn, put him on his wall. Another fighter he did that with was Takanori Gomi, and we saw how phenomenal that fight was. This is just straight out gonna be one of the great fights. What could go wrong for either guy? I mean, he's just dealing with a, uh, another form of himself that maybe is, is a little more prepared that night. No matter what, everybody wins. I think Nick Diaz is gonna use that conditioning to his advantage, and like we've seen in the past, pressure his opponent, that being BJ Penn. He's going to attack the body constantly, try to mix it up because Nick Diaz has very unorthodox striking. As we've seen, you, you'll see him try to use head kicks, because I don't think he, he really cares if BJ Penn tries to scoop one of those legs and put this fight down to the ground. He has awesome sweeps. I think this is Nick Diaz's fight to lose. BJ Penn, a granite chin who always moves forward. Again, his motto, be first. Will he be able to do it against the Stockton bad boy? I don't think so. I'm not an analyst for this one. I'm a fan, and I'm just pumped to see it. I don't know how it's going to go. We're going to hang out on the couch. We're going to have a couple of cold ones. It's going to be one of the great fights. Absolutely one of the greatest fights of the last decade. Two warriors that will come together and lay fists on each other's face in an attempt to really establish or further establish their mixed martial arts legacy. If you are a fight fan, strap yourselves in because this is going to be one for the ages. Don't go anywhere. We're previewing the rest of the UFC 137 card after the break. I came here to kick some butt and hopefully take home the victory. Look to the rest of the UFC 137 main card where there's been an ongoing shuffling of the matches. Dustin Jacoby was originally supposed to face Brad Tavares, who suffered an injury just two weeks before the event and has been replaced by Clifford Starks. They've been bumped down to the preliminary card and now Scott Jorgensen and Jeff Curran are part of the main show. So let's get to that, starting with a look at the co-main event. Wolf Slayer MMA Academy fighter Czech Congo will battle undefeated Matt Mitrione. Congo recently earned knockout of the night when he KO'd Pat Barry, and Mitrione, a cast member on season 10 of The Ultimate Fighter, also earned a knockout victory this past June over Christian Moorcraft. I think Czech Congo um, is a very strong opponent for him. Uh, it's the biggest test for Matt Mitrione by far. Um, Congo has dynamite in both hands, and the guy can wrestle. Um, so uh, I'd be interested to see who wins this fight. You know, I, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, you know, to be able to, to kind of branch out and, and start learning that it's okay for me to be athletic and uh, how to use my athleticism uh, while I fight. You know, when I, when I was younger, when I was younger in the fight game, I, um, it, I used to get almost like reprimanded a lot to say that, you know, it, it, just because just cause you're a Ferrari doesn't mean you have to run in fifth gear all the time. Sometimes you have to run in second gear. Um, and, uh, and I didn't really understand that as much. And then I think Coach Duke, is, I think that he really taught me how to, how to understand, okay, gear, gear, gear. Okay, now explode, now you can downshift again. Pride veteran Mirko Krokop earned submission of the night over Pat Barry at UFC 115, but is coming off back-to-back -back losses to Frank Mir and Brendan Schaub, respectively. Season 10 Ultimate Fighter champion Big Country Roy Nelson has also lost two straight to Junior DeSantos and Frank Mir, which puts him at 2-2 two two in the octagon, but he earned knockout of the night honors in both of his victories. Wrestler Scott Jorgensen, who knocked out Ken Stone in the first round of his UFC debut, has been victorious in six of his last seven fights, while his opponent, MMA pioneer Jeff Curran, has won four of his last five fights and is making his promotional return. Former Sengoku featherweight champion Hatsu Hiyoki will face scrappy veteran George Roop in the octagon. 
The Japanese star has been victorious in 12 of his last 14 fights, while Roop is coming off a knockout win over Josh Grisby at the Ultimate Fighter 13 finale. John Ramdeen tells us more about the Japanese star and this battle. The time has finally come. One of the world's top featherweights makes his UFC debut. Hiyuki! Most emphatic performances we have seen from a Japanese fighter this year. He is one of the best kept secrets from mainstream mixed martial arts. Hatsu Kiyoki finally gets an opportunity to showcase his superlative skills on the biggest stage of the sport. Finding his way up the rankings and maintaining his spot as one of the top 145 pound combatants in MMA, Kiyoki has long dazzled audiences with his exceptional performances. Back in 2006, the Nagoya native captured his first professional title under the TKO banner in a grueling tilt against Mark Hominick. Oh, that is it! Hominick's unconscious! Aoki would retain his title in a memorable second encounter with the machine. And still, TKO World Federweight Champion, Hatsu Aoki! The Japanese fighter is known for a successful stint under the Shudo organization, but also for defeating high-level competitions such as Jeff Curran and Rumin Asato. Upon entering the Sengoku promotion and losing a very controversial split decision to Michihiro Omegawa, he would take it up a notch and earn victories over Ronnie Mann. And that's it! Atsu Hioki! Masanori Kanahara. Hioki just dominating him from the top position. And Marlon Sandro. Alba, 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 Alba. Not only does the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt possess a solid grappling game, but he can also end the fight standing and his adaptability is extraordinary. His first test on American soil comes in the form of WEC veteran George Root, who comes from a camp that is familiar with preparing for Hioki. The 28-year-old has proven himself outside of the UFC, winning championships under the TKO, Shudo, and Sengoku promotions, and he will look to replicate his international success as he begins to forge his own path toward the biggest prize in the sport. Robin Black, Hatsi Hioki, one of the greatest fighters that nobody has ever seen. This guy has skills in every single area of mixed martial arts. He's only now getting his shot at the Ultimate Fighting Championship. How far is he going to go? He can go all the way, man. And what I find really fascinating, we're excited to talk about Hatsu Hioki. And you know, there aren't that many top 10, top five guys in any weight division left in the world outside of the UFC. He's probably the number one guy out there. All you have to do is look what he did to a man named Marlon Sandro, who's also a top 10 145er, to really get an idea of what Hatsu Hioki can do. And if you don't know who Marlon Sandro is, he is the teammate and training partner of UFC featherweight champion Jose Aldo. And rumor is that he gives Jose Aldo fits in the gym, that he actually dominates the UFC champion. And what happened to Marlon Sandro? Hatsu Hioki simply dominated doing what a lot of people didn't expect for him to do. Like I said, this guy has a granite chin, an unbelievable, unbelievable submission game, and just the will to win. And you know what? He really could be the next great hope for Japanese mixed martial arts, and maybe the first ever UFC featherweight champion that's, that comes from Japan. So this, this guy's a very highly touted fighter, and I think a lot of people are gonna like his fighting style. He's one of my favorites to watch because he brings it each and every time. Absolutely. And you know, you talk about his skills and definitely has skills, but when a guy can enter the UFC at this stage of his career with huge wins over international talent, developed in every area, very exciting, very, you know, uh, amazing on the ground, amazing on the feet, and as well prepared and well experienced as he is, people should be excited to see this guy fight George Roop. Robin, George Roop ready to spoil the party for Hatsu Hioki, a very talented fighter in his own right. What does he need to do to destroy the plans of the Japanese star? You know, if you're George Roop, one of two things. Either the UFC hates you or the UFC loves you. Because first he had to face Hominick, who was just on his way up and seemed destined to fight for the title. And now he's got to welcome Hatsu Hioki. Roop is tough. He's got good reach. He's technically skilled everywhere. He's got decent stand-up, although Mark Hominick made him look like a brand new fighter. For Roop, you've got to make this an angry American fight. You've got to put him on the fence. You've got to try to make him uncomfortable in areas that he hasn't been. Elbows and knees and grit, dirty boxing, that kind of stuff, and make it rough and tumble. But 
I mean, to deal with Hatsu Hiyoki, when he's coming here to make a statement in America, that's a tough one. Hatsu Hiyoki, we also know, spent time training in Montreal with Firas Sahabi and the TriStar Gym, so he'll be very well prepared for his Octagon debut. I will have to give the edge to Hatsu Hiyoki in this fight. I think he's too skilled, and I think George Roop will go 2-0 against two former TKO featherweight champions. I gotta agree with you. This is a tough one for George Root, but if, you know if he's if if he sticks to his game plan, if he makes it rough, he's got a shot at it. And either way, he's just been in the ring, or he's about to get in the ring for the second time with another top world class contender. And I said two and zero, oh, and I meant zero oh and two for George Root. I'm really really sorry, but Hatsu Hiyoki is the man. After the break, we're looking at UFC 137's preliminary bouts. No one knows till they know, right? And they didn't know until they know. And now we're here, and now they know. preliminary card for UFC 137, some fighters are making their promotional debut, while others are looking for a win to take them to main card status. John Pollock brings us a look at some of the more intriguing fights that will kick off the night. Rising lightweight Dennis Seaver finds himself in a Spike TV prelim bout when he takes on WEC veteran Donald Cerrone. Seaver enters the bout with a four-fight win streak, having recently disposed of George Sotteropoulos and Matt Wyman. Conversely, his opponent Cerrone has put together five straight wins and is coming off of a first round knockout of the night victory over Charles Oliveira. These two outstanding strikers could provide a fight of the night performance where the winner will take a significant leap up the lightweight ladder. After a successful return to the featherweight division, Tyson Griffin is back in action when he takes on team current product Bart Palaszewski. The Polish fighter aims to rebound off a split decision loss to Kamal Szalarus and procure a successful UFC debut. 2010 was a difficult year for Griffin, who had been on a slump at 155, but he'll aim to regain his gusto as he looks for his second straight win this year. Dropping bouts to Randy Couture, John Jones, and a no contest with Thiago Silva, Brandon Vera returns to the cage to take on Grudge Training Center people Elliot Marshall. It will be a clash of styles as Vera, the Muay Thai specialist, will have to avoid Marshall's submissions if he aims to come out with the win and remain with the UFC. Thank you to our analysts, John Ramdeen and Robin Black, for breaking down the fights. And on behalf of Fight Network, I'd like to thank Iron Core for having us in their space. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the fights this weekend. But Diaz is a great CBJ Black Belt looking for the arm bar underneath. Oh, got it. The crowd anticipating it here. Final 15 seconds of the second round. Locked it in. Matalelo's locked in. Is he gonna tap? He's gonna go to sleep. He did he tap? Unbelievable. BJ Penn has done it. He's tapped. Go he naked choke. Unbelievable.